So Crix did a really good video, really good interview with some of the classic devs about Cataclysm Classic and uh, Season of Discovery. You know, people, people have different thoughts on Season of Discovery. I've called it basically Classic Plus Beta. That's what I think it is. That's how I'm seeing it. Uh, everybody's saying it was really good and that I should check it out. So you guys should check out Crix stuff if you guys like this video, Crix Vibes. Okay, let's continue. Yo, what's up, boys? My voice is shot. I just got back from BlizzCon. Me too. I'm fucking tore back. Okay, but I'm here and I had to do a quick video for you guys because this is huge, right? I'm sure you guys have heard all about Cata Plus. I mean, Cata Classic, sorry, and Classic Plus. What's essentially Classic Plus? The season of Seasons of Discovery. However, thanks to Icy Veins, I had the honor to interview two of the top devs for Cata Classic and Seasons of Discovery with Agrind and Nora. Okay, so that's what this is. This is going to be a short little interview. It's about 30 minutes long. My voice is shot. Nora's voice is shot. So I had to tweak with the audio a little bit to dude, try to every, help you guys. Dude, everybody's yeah, voice everybody. was shot. It's also just recorded from my phone, so it's not some ph phenomenal interview, but we learned a lot of stuff, bro. A lot of stuff. A ton of it. Like I said, I just got back in town today from BlizzCon. I've been gone for like 16 days or something. I've got, I literally recorded every class rune. I played it all. I'm going to start the videos tomorrow with that and keep you guys in touch, okay? We we talked a little bit about Wrath right now. We talked about Kata and obviously Seasons of Discovery. I had a lot of questions. They were very nice and, and answered most of them, to be honest. So that was pretty cool. So kick your feet up, my boys. Grab some popcorn and let's get it. All right, here we go. We're talking for Icy Veins. Yes, that's that what we're here for. We're here for cool. Icy Veins, yeah. That's Icy Veins. They're like, maybe we want to do an interview. I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Just did one. I'll do another one. Yeah. So, like, I'm going to... Obviously, there's Classic Plus, which I don't even know what to ask about that. So, we're gonna, I want to start with some Lich King stuff, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Um, we're at the end, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. With it wrapping up, are you guys happy with how the expansion went? Like, yeah. did it play out how you guys wanted it to and then with the words and stuff in the beginning? I don't think... Okay, so uh, I, I what's super cool, and, I, and I've said this before, it, what's what's really, really cool to see with the Classic team uh, is they're very, like, open. And they're very... Uh, they, 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 like, have been interfacing. I, I feel like there's been so much red tape around Blizzard for years. And uh, like I said, I, I had the opportunity to get to know a lot of people on the, the like, early Classic team really well. Uh, like namely like Omar, right? We got to talk to Brian quite a bit mostly. I mean, I, I would talk to Omar a lot, right? Uh, the big thing is is like there was just so much red tape around when, when like how much they could really communicate and now like the the current classic team is just it, it's kind of like no holds barred They can they can talk about whatever I mean, they I mean obviously there's things that they can't do but it just compared to how it was before It's like really cool and you can see how passionate they are right and uh, like like both Agrand and uh, I, I think Nora is her name. They're, they're, uh, I, I didn't get to talk to her at all, but I, I talked to Agrand a little bit. I talked I talk to a bunch of people, but um, it's just so great to see like how passionate everybody is. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I think I'm very excited to, to hear this interview. I think we, we had to kind of kind of like grow into like the Titan Rune Dungeon thing a little bit, but I, we were very happy with how it ended up. Like, mm -hmm. You know, we kind of got to the point where it's like press W and blast, and, and that it, it's pretty fun. Uh, and, you know, old pre-nerf, old war was a blast. It was probably one of the most technically challenging things we've done from a pre-nerf, but it played out really, really well. And and honestly, ICC has been everything we wanted. Like, it, you know, Lich King is a mythic boss. Right? Yeah, that, that was the next question. Yeah. Are you, there's like 80 guilds that have killed him. Are you guys happy with that? Did you expect that, or were you kind of yeah. like, damn, I thought more would kill him by we, now? We were worried that it would just get blasted through because of how, you know, just players are just better, right? But for the most part, yeah, we're, we're pretty happy with it. It's nice for people to have to kind of earn that, you know, the, the joy of having accomplished something. Mm -hmm. So I, I like it personally. Yeah. That's good. Um, are you allowed to say anything about Ruby Sanctum or not when it's going to come at least or something? It'll, pro it'll be early next year. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're just going to very soon into 2020. What about the, per the ICC buffs? Uh, TBD. We're, we, so this is, this is a tough thing. We want to wait and tell guilds. Like, there's a lot of guilds that really want to prog this yeah. as it was, right? And we learned a lot of good lessons from uh, Serpent Shrine Cavern and stuff where we kind of tried to, like, pull that nerf in a little bit too soon. And that really kind of upset some people. And it's like, so we're just going to kind of, we're, 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 we're waiting for people to tell us that they're ready for it a little bit. Um, there's there's probably a period of time where, like, okay, just we just need to do it. Mm. I'm going to turn on, I'm going to turn on the captioning just um, because the audio stuff. But at the same point, like, we don't want to rush it. So no specific time frame. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you guys ever, because you know there's people that like, they love Lich King. Mm -hmm. They love TBC, Lich King. They don't want to play Kata or they don't want to. I'm not, I'm not a huge Lich King about, guy, like, but I love Burning Crusade. Or talked about like the TBC or an era version of him, mm. kind of like Lich King or TBC, kind of like how there is with Season, yeah. for people that want to just stay in that meta of Lich I have King. Some, I have some insight on this too. It's something we've, we've talked about. We don't have plans of doing, but again, it's one of those things that we continue to you know, listen to player feedback and kind of 
go based on what the, the community is asking for. Mm. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to kind of read read some commentary after this. Dude, her poor voice, chance, dude. Like, <laughs> read forums, really, yeah, on social yeah, media. We've just been kind of a whirlwind. But um, it's something that, never say never. Like, it's not something we have, like, necessarily in the cards right now. But we could, you know, someday maybe. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, I had a chance to talk to somebody on the team about this, too. Uh, specifically about, like, a TBC era. Because um, I commented on that shirt. I was like, dude, I, I like, they had a classic shirt like burning crusade shirt on i was like dude i love burning crusade like i, I feel like it doesn't get enough like burning crusade i feel like doesn't get enough love right because you have you have classic which is like the beginning right that's the genesis and a lot of people look at classic wow as, as a trilogy of, of vanilla burning crusade and wrath and and you have vanilla which is like the genesis and then you have uh the the end of it right you have the big finale the grand finale and lich king and killing arthas right so the the middle of that story ends up getting lost a lot of times. Uh, and uh, the gameplay of Burning Crusade is, is like the, the most fun I've ever had. Espe specifically game, uh, Burning Crusade Classic is, is the most fun I've ever had playing WoW. And uh, I think what sucks about Burning Crusade, again, specifically Burning Crusade Classic, is it had some like key problems for a lot of people that played the game through phase two, through tier five, right? Uh, like the beginning was great, the beginning of Burning Crusade was great, then people kind of noticed some issues that needed to be fixed. And compared to, comparatively to the past, I actually think Blizzard was like very agile in terms of getting it fixed, but it, it, took, it still took them like too long because the, uh, the reputation that Blizzard has had over the years is they just take way the hell too long to do anything, right? It's because of all that red tape at Blizzard, you know? Um, whether it's Blizzard or whether it was Activision or whoever it was, right? There's just so much red tape and it takes forever to make anything happen. So you had this problem of, um, you know, getting alts attuned for raids or like individuals would end up quitting a guild and because you had individuals quitting a guild or a raid because you weren't clearing, that was the first time. Tier five was the first time that people were in, in, in large amounts not able to clear the raids in Classic WoW. And then you started to have people uh, you started to have people fall off. You started to have people quit. Um, so that's why that's why I love Burning Crusade so much, right? Is um, they, they, like that was like whenever it kind of started to hit that point of like, okay, it's you're starting to have a little bit of differentiation between like, I, I earned it. I when I when you killed Kalethos, you feel like you earned it. When you killed Vosh, you feel like you earned it. And then also specifically like my class, right? I, I really love the Paladin gameplay. Um, but there were specific things like that. Uh, eventually them adding tier tokens to be used as PvP gear so you could gear up alts uh, for PvP. Like, they, they did a lot of good things, but they, did it, they didn't have it, actually have it done until Season 3. So uh, I kind of got stuck in a rant there, sorry. But uh, I talked to somebody at Blizzard about it, and uh, they're, they're, uh, it's, it's something, I mean, they mentioned it in this interview where they, they like, talked about it, and, and I think it sounded like it's something that they could just do. Not, like, at the drop of a hat, but but it wouldn't take them very long to be able to spin up TBC era if they wanted to. So maybe that is something that we're going to get in the future. But uh, it, the way that she talked about it, like uh, the way the way that uh, or he talked about it here, is um, the way that he talked about it here. It's like very, uh, you know, maybe right. Uh, but it's like kind of non-committal. But uh, from from. What I, what it seemed like to me was like, yeah, this is something that's doable. Uh, that was when it led to the conversation about like the provision of classic WoW, right? Which I've talked about before and I'll talk about it again in the future, but I wanna, I wanna throw it out there just so I can remember to talk about it later. Um, we had the conversation about the provision of classic WoW, which is like how important it is to have vanilla Burning Crusade and Wrath available for people to play. Anyway, continue. And that's, that's something I'll talk about in the future. So let's talk about Cataclassic now. What are you excited to see? do feel or let us or what are you excited to have us react to you know what i mean i think <coughs> for me personally sorry for me personally i'm excited to see us carrying over the new dungeon difficulties and we're going to take more dungeons over into cataclysm uh, i think those were a huge hit we've learned a lot like like josh said we've learned a lot uh through that um, sort of letting players earn that power and then blast through right and, and uh basically yeah. making it easier for folks to catch up yeah. as well as the expansion progresses um, another thing too is like we're making adjustments to the length of like our, our patch cadence basically and how long a raid tier has been released. We don't want folks to kind of, you know, 
we get through a raid, like continue to clear it, continue to clear it, and have it kind of drag on. And so we do plan on kind of speeding things up a little bit. Then. Mm. Yeah, we, we've talked about this in a couple of other interviews that I think it's really interesting to see what people think of Cataclysm with that faster cadence, because I, I, this is sort of a, an assumption, but I think it's a fair assumption that a, a lot of the reason that Cataclysm uh, was divisive was because of the cadence, it mm-hmm. was, it especially was. Dragon Soul. Just That's the main like, complaint is how long Dragon long. Soul was. You know what I mean? Like, you can only do kill the spine of Deathwing so many times, right? And that's the benefit of... See, a lot of my problems... We're not. We're obviously making adjustments, making changes and stuff, but we're not building the content. And so that's really the lag time for, for what... That's what dictates how long it is before another patch can come, is, like, building the content. Well, it's already built for the most part. We're making, turning, you know, turning, pulling a few levers on it, but we have a lot of agency in how fast to do that. And we're... I'm, I'm really curious to see if, if sort of, like... A lot of people who are maybe like kind of never catas, you know, like turn a corner on it. Uh, I think they are. I think yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah. I like. I I know a bunch of people that a couple of years ago, like my guild, like they're like, I'm I'm done it right at Lich King, but they're all just like, well, you know, actually, you know, this is yeah. pretty good. Now that it's here, like, we're all still together. Let's just keep you know keep the party rolling. So it's like I think that's I think that's cool. So. I think that's one of the cool things of, of working on classic is as we release, you know, as we work on our progression servers, it's one of those things that like. Uh, we can so this reimagine these experiences. This kind of leads me to believe that they're just going to keep sense, going mm-hmm. uh, for a modern audience. You know. yeah, totally. And, but the objectively, <coughs> the content I'm looking forward to the most is Firelands. Yeah, yeah, me too. I love Firelands. Yeah, like, I it's, love it's, it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that comment right there, by the way, kind of leads me to believe, like, Classic is set up in a way that they're probably just going to keep it rolling, uh, which kind of seems weird. Like, when are we going to get Classic Wad, Classic Mists, Classic, you know, Classic... Shadowlands, right? Classic Dragonflight. Because at this point, it's like, I, I feel like Cataclysm is that break point. So it's not really classic anymore. I mean, if people are going to play it, it's free, right? Like, I thought they were going to do Cataclysm because it's free. And what I mean by it's free, it's free for them. When they designed vanilla, classic vanilla, they basically reverse engineered the retail version of the game, which at the time was Legion. They started uh, reverse engineering the game back down all the way to vanilla. And they they were really specific about it because they said, uh, I'm pretty sure they said this publicly, they wanted to be able to go back to classic in a way where they were like, you know, dotting their I's, crossing their T's, making sure they cover their bases so that if you wanna, if they wanted to progress past vanilla, they would have the capabilities to do so easily. And that there wouldn't be, have to be like a lot of dev time spent after classic at launch. Cause once classic launches, the clock starts. Right, the clock starts for like release cycles of you know eventually doing Burning Crusade, different patches, yada yada yada. If they are prepared to just kind of keep on rolling, I think they're gonna keep going after Cataclysm. Uh, I'm not a big Cataclysm guy. I will level in Cataclysm. I never raided in Cataclysm. I quit after a couple months because I didn't like the the class design of uh, how I played a paladin. I will I will at least level in Cataclysm just for it is the leveling in Cataclysm was very fun for me. I remember having a good time leveling, but let's continue. It's a banger. It's one of my favorites. That's like I think it's the best raid ever in the world. Yeah, it, I've ever done. I, 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 oh, you know what? That, and that's a good point, Volt. And I've said this before. Every expansion was somebody's favorite expansion. So enough people are playing. There's no reason to stop. Yeah, as, as long as people keep playing the game. When Classic WoW first came out 15 years ago, or excuse me, uh, now 20 years ago, almost 19 years ago, original WoW came out. You know, you played it, you loved it, whatever, and you moved on. And then eventually that led to WoW Classic coming out in 2019. So you had this like 15 year time frame of, yeah, I want to play something from 15 years ago. And there was a lot of people that hated on people that wanted vanilla. There's a lot of people that hated on people that wanted legacy servers. A lot of people hated on people that want classic, whatever. And uh, this led to a lot of animosity for a while, for years actually, from like the private server community and all this stuff. And a lot of that is like settled at this point because the, the communities have merged so much. But now when you look at it four years later, well, it's been almost the same amount of time from vanilla from classic launch to vanilla as it was from cataclysm to what would be cataclysm classic like you're almost looking at that same time frame so now if people are like weird about people wanting cataclysm i think that's kind of hypocritical because well you wanted vanilla somebody else wants cataclysm even though you might not want cataclysm somebody else wants it so it's weird to not be like supportive of that so long as it doesn't really take away from your game which it's seemingly not taking away from your game I, I think it's uh, I, I think it's just a very odd thing to do. Karazhan was my favorite for a while, but now that it, I think it's Firelands. The, the funny thing about Firelands too is I had kind of just gotten 
a, a one, I changed positions at Blizzard when it came out, and I was working a night shift, yeah. so I couldn't do heroic. Oh. <laughs> I did heroic later, but I didn't do it when it was current, so I'm super jazzed. I did some of it when it was current, but I didn't do all of it. I never killed uh, Ragnaros when it was current, so I'm super jazzed to go back and actually do that this time. How the work, lockouts work with the 10 minutes and 25 men sharing a lockout and then the same lo eye level loot? Are you guys going to mess with that at all? Or are you thinking about keeping that the same? I mean, probably not. Like, well, I think it's likely that we'll make some adjustments. I don't know. I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't want to make a promise, honestly. I think we're still going to probably just be evaluating that. Like, one of the problems, or one of the challenges, uh, let's say, with, with Cataclysm was that uh, you know, there wasn't a good, very a good incentive to be in a 25 player guild when you could kind of just go do the same thing mm -hmm. in 10. But on the same okay. note, some encounters are way harder on, on 10, 10 minute, yeah. like super hard, and others are, are a lot easier. So, um, I think that that might be a kind of a, a differentiator that, that might make keep people in that 25 player. You know, it, it depends on your guild too. We really like the idea of being flexible that if you know, if you do have a smaller guild. Uh, you know, letting you kind of keep rolling with that smaller guild seems, seems to make sense. And what, you know, you want to talk about guild improvements yeah. too. So we right? do plan on making some adjustments to the guild progression system because uh, initially when Cata launched, guild progression day, system, I remember this. Uh, you know, the guild rewards very much rewarded big mega guilds. Mm, and yeah. so what I what I saw personally and I think what a lot of other people saw was their cute that. little mom and pop type guilds yeah. ended up kind of dispersing as we were like, hey, really want to collect those sweet, sweet rewards and then went and, you know, joined Mega Guilds. And then yeah. It got kind of large and wieldy. When the purpose of people, like, getting together for, to play is just for those rewards, like, yeah. it got a little bit, like, cold and impersonal. Or, or on the other side of it, too, like, your my guild eventually broke up, but... but we kept inviting just randoms just to get... Yeah, they did. Bodies. I remember that was and a huge thing in Cataclysm. A little bit. And so that's Huge why thing. we just want to steer away from that. So we really want to enable those mom and pop guilds yeah. to continue that's a to, good to idea. exist or, or start to exist. Um, but we're just going to have to really take a look at the, the reward structure. What we did in um, uh, Max Ramus, whenever we went and, and added the 25 player lead to 10 man, is we made the 25, 25 player version drop an extra item. Yeah. So that might be something that's on on, on in the cards. Okay. Make it a little bit more incentive mm -hmm. to actually do a larger rate. But size. you'd keep the eye level pretty much the same. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't yeah. think I don't think there'd be any adjustments there. But it, honestly, it could still change. Okay. We're still kind of evaluating the design there. Okay. What about cool. the talent structure? I think I know one complaint was you're locked into one. Like yeah. you can't hybrid. The, the, it took out the yeah. ability to go hybrid. Man, I, dude, I hated hated the class design in, in Kata, and I know I'm not. I'm certainly not in the majority here. It, it might be close on like the people that liked it and the people that didn't like it. But man, that was such a killer for me, dude. I, I, like the fact that you locked into a spec, the fact that you locked into a spec and you played the spec and you stopped playing the class. So this is ironically enough, Kevin Jordan, the original uh, lead for class design in WoW. He was in charge from, from Vanilla, Burning Crusade and Wrath uh, he left in Keta, and then uh, they they redid the whole thing, right? And they 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 threw it out the window because you can see it. There's a very like, uh, it's a very clear thing that in vanilla and and Burning Crusade and then into Wrath, you play the class. Like if I'm playing a paladin, whatever spec I'm playing, it feels like I'm playing a paladin, and and you use abilities while you're playing the game from your the entirety of your kit. But if you're playing in Cataclysm, like, there's some abilities that just, like, go away, you know? Like, there's just some things you just don't have. I, think it, I don't remember what, what heal it was. I think you lose one of the heals. If you go Retribution, uh, you either got you either lost Holy Light or you lost Flash of Light. So. Yeah, you would lose Holy Light. You, you didn't have auras anymore. They, they got rid of mana, and you now had, like, a Holy Power system, which was basically combo points. You now had combo points uh, in plate with a two-hander, <clears throat> and it, like... You had a word of glory that you can use to off heal. So there were like some cool ideas, but what ended up happening was it's cataclysm was whenever a lot of the classes started to feel the same because <clears throat> there was a big emphasis, I believe, on esports. And people were trying super hard to make WoW into an esport come cataclysm. MLG was popping off. WoW was the biggest game in the world. WoW was a cultural phenomenon around this time. Like around Burning Crusade going into Wrath, WoW was a, a just on top, WoW was Fortnite in 2017, 2018. 
Do you guys remember how big, actually I think it was like 2018. You guys remember how big Fortnite was in 2018? That's what WoW was in 2007, 2008, 2009. It was all over the news. I remember at one point, Athene was on Fox News. And I'm like, I was like, I was blown away. Whenever I saw Athene on TV, I was blown away. They wanted to focus on esports because esports was also popping off. And in order to do that, they needed to give everybody a heal. Everybody some everybody some form of sustain, right? Remember warriors, you would I remember stunning warriors, they would have second wind and their health would go up. Out of the stun, they would have more health. You know, rogue recoup vanish. And they would heal themselves while vanish to full health for more than I could heal myself as a paladin. I remember rogues out healing me head on. Absolutely insane. Where you needed to get that last point in order to get into a next tree. You watch Fox News, oof, okay. Look, is Hassan live? Like, come on, this isn't a political thing. It's like, I saw the dude on TV. I was like in high school or whatever. You know, like, I don't give a shit about that. Like, come on, really some people are so like. Like a major talent overhaul, but actually by the end of Cataclysm, Cataclysm had, had a ride, right? Mm -hmm. of, of class uh, talents and, and, and class design. But by the end of it, for the most part, a lot of classes ended up in a very good place. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's a, a risk of doing more damage than good. Dude, I play Warlock, so I'm happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, Paladins, I, like, honestly, all my main classes are really good at, yeah. at, by the end of it. Well, that's the best thing about Kata is a lot of classes are good. They're, yeah. they're, it's not like warriors only in yeah. Classic or, right. you know, Warlocks and Hunters yeah. and TBC. Like, yeah. you, this is like exactly. a big broad. Like, I mean, I people know. ask me all the time what's good, and I'm in, in like six classes. I'm like, they're it's, just... So it's kind of like we have like a weird situation where it's like the system itself is like, maybe if we could change it, we could, but it's like, we don't want to do damage to what yeah. works, right? So I think a lot of what we're going to do, like we made very tactical changes to classes in, in, in Wrath and, you know, we learned some lessons there too, but I think we're, we're going to look at it and try and make as few sort of tactical adjustments as possible, but any kind of major system overhaul, probably not. Okay. I don't want to, don't want to do more, more harm. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, to be fair, that does make sense. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think they should change it. It's just that's just what the game is. That is just what Cataclysm is, and I don't think they should change it. Um, I, it's just not. That's just not my thing, right? But, uh, but yeah, man. I mean, this, there's definitely like a huge. Um, there's a big emphasis on balance, and man, let me tell you, balance is boring. They like balance. I remember the, when you played a DPS as a Rat Paladin, you were now a DPS. So because you were a DPS, they're like, oh, but you're still a paladin. You can still heal other people. Rogue can recoup and they can heal themselves. Warrior can second wind and they can heal themselves, but they can't heal other people. So how they did the balance of that is like, well, you can still flash of light. You can flash of light yourself and you can flash of light somebody else. So because you can flash of light more than one person, that's not fair if you can heal for the same amount as like a warrior who can only heal himself so you can heal less. And it didn't make any sense. So now I was getting out healed by, by rogues. I was getting out healed. Like, it was insane, right? It was insane. So that's, that's, that was like one of my, my big beefs with Cataclassic. Um, this Cataclassic portion is almost over. So, so let's keep watching. This is super random, but um, you know how ZA and ZG is phase two? would be like a phase two? Because in the beginning, would you ever like just... I think the way we're going to handle ZA. Oh, one more second. I want to. I, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't follow that question. I was... System overhaul problem. This is super random, but okay. um, you know how ZA and ZG is phase two would be like a phase two. Because in the beginning, would you ever like just? I think the way we're going to handle ZA and ZG. I don't know if we talked about this, but we're doing it, I guess. Uh, uh, I, th I think what we're doing with ZA and ZG is we'll probably do it like an interstitial, yeah. like half phase. Like we might not do a full patch for it. Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll oh do yeah. Like, you know, the launch and then you know, Bastion and Twilight, all those raids and stuff. And then some midpoint between that and and Firelands, we'll just release. Them. I like that. And that's why it's big because that was like a whole phase. For yeah. Ten, ten, no, ten, it's wild. not going to be a whole phase. Yeah. No. But like, that's good. A lot of people are going to like that. We're spacing it out by radio, okay, for sure. Good. But that would be like a midpoint thing, right? <coughs> you mentioned, uh, so for hardcore, you said SSF's coming. Yeah. That's going to be cool. Is well, it? SF. SF. SF? Yeah. Okay, true. Well, is it, um, yeah. like, on the same server, or is it going to be a different server? Yeah. You mentioned, uh, so for hardcore, you said SSF's coming. Yeah. That's going to be cool. Is well, it? SF. SF. Yeah. Okay, true. Well, is it, um, yeah. 
like on the same. I, I think it's interesting that they don't want to call it solo self founder. Uh, are we going to be playing self-founder. like with the people we're playing with now? Because they don't want to. They don't want to promote so people like feeling like they have to play solo. There'll be a, like a, a checkbox, a button for you to press uh, that will basically uh, enable self found mode for oh, that character. That's dope. Uh, so from character creation, so you can still do dungeons and stuff like that. Mailbox trading, auction house. Uh, and at any point, you can, you know, remove those restrictions if you're like, hey, uh, I don't, this isn't for me. But you can't, you know, re-enable it, obviously. Yeah. So. Wait, you can take it, it off at some point? You can. You like, can. you just... But the, the way it'll work is it, you'll never be like, shit, no, we'll be able to put it back. And it's going to key off of this whole of iron system mm-hmm. that, you know... Ah, uh, okay, so I talked about this before. I talked, I, I literally, if you guys remember... If you guys were watching, I talked about this on stream. They literally should use the Soul of Iron system and they should just put that. I actually was surprised they didn't put it in hardcore. And you go, you you do, you get the buff, you have the Soul of Iron and that Soul of Iron basically makes you self-found. So I'm really glad that's the way they're doing it because it's it's already in the game. It's, it's built in, it's super streamlined. Players have done it before, huge. Yeah, There's, I mean, I was like, it's already there. So like just, it shouldn't be like a checkbox whenever you create your character. It should be something that you have in game and just do a system that's already in place. And it was in, in Season of Mastery, uh, whenever Season of Mastery came out. Just in the buff. And if you ever take it off, that then you just lose it. But if you get to 60, you get a little badge up there that says, I made it to 60. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're kind of, we're investigating some things to, to, to make it a little bit more interesting. I don't want to say too much right now. Mm-hmm. We're going to okay. talk about it more in the next probably few weeks and months. Uh, as we get closer to the launch, but uh, we, we got a couple of little little hidden tricks up our sleeve to make that's exciting. Yeah. A, a lot, a lot of us are like, or we're looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. How about that? Uh, in the mock crush tournament, you guys like that? Was, it, was that magical it's to watch? Thing. It was. Do you guys plan to do any like events, or are you kind of leaving up to the community like that? To yeah, I know you sponsor. I know you guys are partnered yeah. with them. Yeah, and I think we're we're open. I mean, this is this is kind of actually outside of our department as the developers. No. We don't do event planning or anything. But like, I know that for 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 my part, I would love to see more of that thing, more partnerships like that. So I'm hoping I'm hoping we can do more. I'm hoping the community wants to do more, wants to see more. I think I think we probably have a pretty good idea that they do. That was the most watched WoW event ever. Yeah, that, that was crazy. That was pretty yeah, crazy. Yeah, and it was super yeah. entertaining. Uh, I was flying around on the GM account watching it, <laughs> and it was great. It was awesome. No, they, dude, they were. Yeah, yeah, we all were. No one, no one got one. <laughs> um, one more, dude. I had. I I swear. I think I had like almost everybody on the team. I had almost everybody on the team come up to me or or tips at some point at BlizzCon, and and just dude, the Makara tournament was amazing. Like, thank you guys. Like that felt really good, dude. It felt really good to to make content and do something that like the people that make the game are proud of watching. Like, think about that for a second. That felt so damn good. The most viewed event ever, the most viewed tournament in history of WoW was a classic WoW event that was spawned really because of hardcore servers coming out and then going into the code and just changing the the dual dual ending at one health to dual ending at zero health. Like literally you change one line of code, mock garage instead of slash dual, you know? It's like, that's basically what it is. And it, and it enabled the biggest tournament ever. Insane, insane, dude. The, the, cause, cause we heard it was, no, Race of the World first, I think peaked at 280. Yeah, it peaked at 280, and I don't remember which race it was. One of the races peaked at 280, uh, highest viewed, and then this one was like 300 something. I don't know if it was like 308 or whatever, but yeah, that was sick. Did you catch what he said about the GM account? Yeah, he was. Uh, he told he told me that earlier too. He's like, yeah, I was flying around watching the thing like all day. So, about hardcore, is would you ever? Wait, actually, this is a good question. The 100k prize had nothing to do with it, Kappa. If the prize money is higher, does it make it more interesting to watch for you guys? For me, it's no, actually. Like for me, like the, the I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Like, I, cause I'm like, I'm looking at the content. But, but I think, I think that maybe for most people it does. People are more sweaty for more money, so it's better. Mm. Maybe there's like a threshold. 
The more money's on the line, the more anticipation. Yeah, maybe. Oh, this is a good point. The money is what built the hype for the players and the players hype made more viewers hyped. I like that. That, that, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense actually. Cause I, I was trying to like piece it together. I think you're right. But I do think there's a threshold, right? Like, like even if the tournament was like 50,000, I think even if we did 50K, it would have been really good. Or have you guys talked about a fresh, like ever like having a new fresh on it? Or is it like gonna be that server for, you know, whenever? Not really something we've considered doing. Like, I mean, again, with the never say never thing, yeah. but like, you know, for the most part, we think it's not quite as impactful as say just any other classic fresh server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also too, we don't like, there. there's, you know, people who played classic WoW for a while. There, there's this, there's always a call for fresh, fresh, fresh. Oh, <laughs> and, it, fresh. and it's one of those things that fresh. it's like, we don't want to get in the, in the habit of kind of almost setting an expectation that you're, we're going to let a server run for six months and then basically intentionally you have to do it fresh. fresh. Yeah. And so it's like, people like persistence too. There, there's a there's a contingent that's like, I just want to, I just love the first three months of the server, right? And uh, I think for those folks, like uh, there's a little bit of a distance makes the heart grow fonder thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, if we do it every three or four months, then at a certain point it's going to, that's probably going to get a little stale, right? So it's like let, let's let let it breathe for a minute, let it let it see where it goes. We're gonna see, it, it's going to be interesting to see kind of the impact that injecting self found in the in the mix has. Um, and like I said, we got a couple little sprites for that that we might uh, you know that's talk exciting. About soon. So Hell yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Uh, um, how about LFR and Kata? Are you going to let it in? How what was the talk on LFR? That's kind of something we're still discussing internally because. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're aware of there being a potential for the dynamic where players kind of just queue for LFR and it maybe deteriorates some of that, you know, community feel of having to be part of a guild, a part of a group mm. or to, to experience mm. that content. Um, but we are still actively discussing it behind closed doors. We, we do want to hear feedback from the community and, you know, what, what do players want? What do they want to see out of Cataclysm? Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I don't like LFR. Uh, I, I've never liked LFR. I don't even like looking for dungeon, to be honest with you. Uh, I know I know there's people out there that disagree with me, but I I really think LFR is like a bad idea for the game. I, I think you're at, that's you're starting to add more and more difficulties, and you're starting to really spread out the. It it breaks up the power creep in the game, um, but uh, I, I don't know I don't know wait this, this is coming up while they're talking about hardcore, right? Hold on, maybe did I mishear this? Let me let me let me go back to that question. Let me let me listen to this one more time. Sorry, because because yeah, we're we're a way thing. We're still you go. So oh, yeah, yeah. We'll see uh, that goes. Um, I want to listen to this how about one LFR more. and Kata. Are you gonna let it in? How about was the talk on LFR? That's okay, cool. okay. So yeah, I know. It was just it was just uh, a little bit disorganized, a little bit. That's all. Uh, I was like confused. I was like, wait, are they talking about LFR and like a? My bad. Sorry. I was like, why would they ever do that? Okay. Um. No. Yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of LFR. Again, even though I might not act actively playing Cataclysm, I think something like LFR is bad because you're now adding like different difficulties for, um, for, and this is, this is a problem in retail. I'm gonna talk about the retail problem. Whenever you have like LFR, normal, heroic, mythic raids, you now have four different levels where you need to have a separation of uh, power that you get from uh, or like a differentiation between the, the the type of gear that you get from each raid, and whenever that happens, you end up building more and more power creep. So you end up having like four tiers in one tier when it comes to looking at it from a power creep perspective, and that's why retail wow you have this problem of uh, each patch plays like it's in its entire own expansion where they add in some new systems. The, you know the the low end gear versus the mythic gear is there's a massive difference in item level you end up having a whole patches worth of power creep and features and not features but like <coughs> um issues a whole expansion's worth of issues in one patch yeah that's the thing i don't like so yeah that's in general i just don't like lfr classic plus or i guess seasons of discovery yeah, sure. i think the biggest question change i've done the demo so many times now but that <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah we sped around it yeah. we did yeah you know we did yeah. um where'd the rune idea come from the rune system what made what like yeah i guess that yeah. started that where'd that come from what was the idea of that uh 
I feel like I'm hogging the mic here. I don't, do you want well, to try and take a stab at this? I think it was more of a group effort. Yeah, a little bit. really. Like yeah. I was I was about to start throwing out names, and I was like, I shouldn't do that. Um, but I, I think I really do think like in general, we got together as a team. There's been there was lots of brainstorming. There was lots of like, what should this system look like? How do we want players to interact with these these abilities, these mm. class changing abilities? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so now they're getting into the season of discovery stuff. So. Uh, this interview with Crix, by the way. So this is, this interview is with uh, with with Agrend and uh, Nora from the classic team. Crix is doing this interview and he's talking about season of discovery. People have been saying that uh, this is this is really good. S fan, check out this video. Crix had this great interview. So shout out to Crix for for doing this. We uh, we got to see him at BlizzCon a little bit, and uh, actually Crix. <laughs> Crix Crix was the guy that tripped over the the light in the meet and greet. If you guys don't know who Crix is. <laughs> He, when he was walking around the meet and greet, he tripped over the light. Uh, it was so funny, dude. He was like, it was just, that was hilarious. Oh, Craig's is here. <laughs> that was so funny. That was so funny, Craig's. Okay. That yeah, was a big light, dude. That was a big ass light. Okay. So, uh, anyway, let's uh, let's keep watching. Let's, let's try it over here. I think the biggest question change i've done the demo so many times now but that <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah we sped around it we yeah, did yeah. yeah you know we did yeah. um where'd the rune idea come from the rune system what made what like yeah i guess that yeah. start that where'd that come from what was the idea of that i feel like i'm hogging the mic here i don't you want well, to try and take her step voice step. is gone she's probably yeah really yeah. i was i was about to start throwing out names and i was like i shouldn't do that um but i i think i really do think like in general, we got together as a team. There's been there was lots of brainstorming. There was lots of like, what should this system look like? How do we want players to interact with these these abilities, these class changing abilities? Yeah. Right? Do we want them to be like pot swappable? Like you can just change them at any time, yeah. uh, learn them like a, a book of spells. You know what I mean? Like, or do we want them to be like on use? It's used up or something like that. And we we went this, basically the spells route, right? So you can at any time swap your abilities out, come up with some interesting builds. Um, we decided to add quite a few runes, you know, like yeah. twelve runes per class. Uh, in the, it started out with way more too before we kind of trimmed down. Yeah. <laughs> is it twelve per class period, or is it going to uh, be more? It's it's just be in the one to twenty-five. Okay. It's 12. So like uh, what I saw in the last example, those are my runes. Yeah. I feel like this thing is going to get blown way the hell out of how to just just it's gonna get way out of hand i i mean obviously they were gonna have more runes as you level up but they're gonna have to prune this as time goes on wait maybe that's the plan maybe they're planning on doing that i am i am full send by the way i am full send committed to, to the belief that Season of Discovery is the classic plus beta, and then they're going to full release it like a year later where it's like a, a fresh Season of Discovery from 1 to 60. I'm just, that is that is my reality in my head, and I'm just going to act like that's the fact. Boom. Yeah. So maybe what's happening is they're just adding a bunch of abilities throughout the, the, the course of like 1 to 25, 26 to 40, whatever, right? Whatever, I, I don't remember the exact level ranges again, but uh, maybe they're just going to throw a bunch of them out there, see what sticks, prune them down, and then you might have like 12 from 1 to 25, but, you know, and then maybe you have like 20 total by the time you get like 35 or whatever. But then once they cut everything down, maybe there's going to be like only like 20 to 30. Maybe there'll be like 25 or 24 or something. I don't know. I'm just, I'm throwing random numbers out there, but maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they're just, it's that kind of that shotgun, just throw everything at the wall, see what sticks, and then then fix it, rebalance it, and really uh, utilize the information that they get from Season of Discovery to make Classic Plus. So, anyway, continue. For now. Dude, can you, can, so an example of like my metamorphosis rune was in my glove slot. Is that always going to be the glove slot? Or can you put the rune in your pants slot? Or no, that will go. It'll be the glove slot. Okay. I mean, unless some, like, rebounds happen, yeah, yeah. Point, which mm -hmm. we would try really hard to avoid that. Yeah. So the plan is for that to be done. Um, to kind of build on that, like, a little bit of deep lore uh, for, for sort of the season is we have been talking about sort of the a general idea of this season since literally WoW Classic Beta, the 2019. That's like, I re remember being in a room with folks and we had, like, we're watching on, it was before the pandemic and we're together in the in the classic pit, you know, the, the, the bullpen or whatever, and we had it on TV, we're watching, like, I think it was a dueling thing that S-Fan was doing and 
and his ears getting red. And it was so fun to watch them just pull all the stops out and just wacky combinations of items. Yes! Like 30 or whatever. Yes! It was so fun to watch, and we really loved that. Yes, so we kind dude! kind of started working backwards from that idea. And we, well, it was after Season of Mastery came out, we're like, what, what would we want to do next? We knew we wanted to do something a lot deeper than Season of Mastery. Hell yeah! And we started kind of working backwards from that idea. It was like, well... It would be really cool to have these level breaks, but what are you going to do during that? And one of the things is like, what if like there's like kind of like almost <laughs> Easter egg hunts like well. kind of thing? Or, and oh and at the time, the idea not. was actually like, hey, why don't we just make these like new possibilities <laughs> and stuff, item set bonuses or something? And it's like, well, that's cool, but it's like, what if they don't drop? Like, what if you know? There's there's a lot of things with that like that kind of gatekeep some of the coolest stuff that you'd want to do behind like you got to get lucky, you got to spend a bunch of gold or whatever. And so that's like, well, why don't we just have the room be something that's discoverable, like in uh, those discoveries. And so that's kind of like the genesis of it, but it's almost something we've been talking about for so many years now, it's sort of evolved that, you know, once we actually started working on it, we had a pretty good idea of kind of think what we wanted to do. Um, and we just kind of barreled forward. Yeah. And the thing I said in the panel, being excited for players to venture forth and discover them on their yeah. own, like, I mean that because some of them are actually quite funny. Yeah. Like, are they gonna be harder to find? Or is it like, can you give an example of what it's like finding? Like, is it like you went to a gold shower inn and there's like a, a box and it's there or something? Uh, some of that, them are that simple. Good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Okay. So someone else asked us. Interesting. Just like quests or something, or newly yeah. added. And I, I was like, maybe, maybe some of them are newly added quests yeah. that weren't there before in the game. Yeah. However, most of them are things like, uh oh, I've discovered this object in the world. Let me interact with it. Oh, it tells mm, me some kind yeah. of story, and it gives me hints of where to go. Maybe look for the next clue. Right. Oh, so that's dope. So it's actually quite yeah. almost because we went into it knowing okay. this was all going to be data mined eventually, yeah. right? And players were going to solve these and probably make an add-on for it or something. Um, but we also realized that, like, even if data mining occurred, like, if yeah. players don't go and venture out and, like, actually solve the riddles, they're yeah. probably not going to piece it together just by looking at the game files alone. Yeah, is might. it, like, random? Like, if, and using like a metaglyph, yeah. is that metaglyph found, or meta rune found everywhere in the world that one way, or is it... Meta. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, you know I am because that's just a simple you know, example. You know, like, that's actually. Good. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that that room in particular is one that there's there's ca lots of categories of how they're discoverable, okay. and that particular one is one that is part of kind of a chain. It's like because that's oh. really iconic. Yeah, it's like yeah. A very I I can't even explain iconic. to you how I felt when I sat down. Right. And then and, logged in and saw that. Icon. That discovery isn't going to be going and looting a chest. There's a lot here to that. It might span multiple zones. There's a lot to it. Gonna, okay. So it's going to be. It's going to be a minute. So the good, the good runes, you make them work for it. Yeah. You. Yeah. For sure. That's good. I mean, good is subjective, right? But like the ones that are like impressive, like visually impressive, or or really iconic, like uh -huh. those, those are the things that you might have to work for. But okay. It, it's 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 different. Some some are chests. Some are you find an NPC, you speak to them, and they may have a special interaction, and they have you do a thing like. Some of them are traditional quests. It really is very varied. And there's hundreds and hundreds of them in the 1 through 25 because there's so many different starting zones that we had to duplicate the runes, but we didn't necessarily duplicate the discovery method. Yeah. So some, some zones have their own flavorful discovery methods that are flavorful to that zone and classes in that zone. Oh, ah, so okay. The same rune by doing different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can. There's is it like some of them, you get yeah. the rune and your bag, you use it, and now it's a rune? Yes. Yep, okay. it, yeah. Can you... Is it? Can you? I don't know why it matter. They're not. You can't trade them or nothing, right? Yeah, you're solo. So you're. I'm yeah. only going to find a warlock one. So I can't go find the mage one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's some good. Of the, some of the discoveries. Yeah, that'd be that'd be kind of shitty. Uh, I, I want to clarify this because I think I know what he was talking about. Blue Blender, you said good is not subjective. Uh, I think when he said good is subjective, he meant like uh, how how effective or how good a specific rune is. Uh, it's subjective. To to a, to whatever situation you're using it in, right? It's good in in this situation. It's good in that situation. Uh, that that's what he meant by good as subjective, I believe. Do have a cross cross class element, mm. like you know? I I don't think it's too spoilery. To say, At least in the like, context of what they're talking about, that's what it sounds like. Meant. Where you find a uh, you know a, single target a, AOE. A, 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 a dead character and you have to do like a ritual of like send their soul yeah, to the Shadowlands, right? You, need, warlock you right. need two healers for that, right? But like oh. either healer could get their own classroom. Right? Oh, that's yeah. Well, that's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be yeah. fun just to, like little Easter yeah. eggs running around yeah, trying to get exactly. them. Exactly. There's tons of there's a lot of stuff like that. And it gives you like excuses to interact with other people too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. 
And you're gonna see a lot of people shouting. It's like, hey, I found this thing. I don't know what to do. Does anybody know? And it's like, it's like, oh, I know. It's like, oh, I need a buddy for that. Can you come and help me with it? And like, that's 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 the intent. Anyway. That's what we hope. That's the exciting part. Is that people are saying like, if, if it's capped at 25, that's gonna take. Is it like you didn't change? Are you changing the experience game from no, one to twenty? It's just no. whatever it is right now. Yeah, it's what it is. So that's like super fast. And I'm like, yeah, but now you can go run around everywhere and find all your your oh, rooms for sure, dude. And you, you know, the way we kind of built it too is like. You know what I can't wait for, man. I cannot wait when let's call back to level 30 classic beta May 2019th June 2019th do you guys remember when we did like Scarlet Monastery and we did like that whenever me and Asmin I think it was me Asmin stay safe ah oh, damn who was in that group we we did we did Scarlet we did we did SM Armory Asmin and Gru. We did SM Armory. We killed Herod at level 30. We had five level 30s in the group and we killed Herod. That was probably a legitimate world first. That was because there's that that has probably never been done before because there's no reason for it to have ever been done before. Why would you ever run armory with five level 30s? We had fishing poles and we were doing all we were popping potions and so. Here's the big challenge. A level 25 cap. Do we go to Nomergon? Try and clear Nomergon at level 35? Or 25, excuse me. I said I said 20. I said 35. At 25? That would be sick. Now here's the question. What if Nomergon is now a raid and it's locked? Who knows? You have Razorfin Crawl. You could do SM Library. Like, that'll be hype, dude. Being level 25. Imagine, imagine we run it back, dude. Me, Asmin, whoever, right? We get together and we're like, yo, let's try and do this shit, dude. Let's try and do this really high level thing that we should not be able to do. That's gonna be sick, man. That's gonna be, I can't wait, man. We're, we're gonna hit it. We, we talked to the panel about there's like a tutorial room, right? Honestly, if you find nothing but that tutorial room from until you hit 25, you're still going to be kind of pumping. Like, yeah. like the first Paladin rune I showed was Crusader. Show. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, that alone, like, it, huge, huge change to the Paladin level. Yeah. And if you found nothing else for, until you hit 25, you'd be jamming. Yeah. And most other classes are like that. The crowd cheered so loud when I said Crusader <laughs> Strike. I knew they'd cheer, but I didn't expect... Yeah. And in the so first was the taunt right into it. It was like their paladins were going crazy. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You'll find them pretty easy level, and I'll just level on and find some runes. Maybe I'll find meta right away. Just like put a drop it there for me. They're on the ground right there. She's <laughs> so, like, check the dirt ground pile right there. Some of them are pretty, though they're on the critical path, and some of them are a little off the beam. Okay. Okay, the, about the demo tanking, is that, is was your thought, like, can you main tank as a demo? Are you, or is it supposed to be on par with like a warrior tank, Paladin tank, bear, Feral Jude? The good question. Like Very good question. Off tank, you're helping. This actually kind of affects my opinion. Threat easily, but like I don't, you know, in gear. It should be able to contend with other tanks. Yeah. So it's a tank. It's like this is going to be a main sure. tank. I, I think if you've noticed playing the demo enough too, like if you play a horde, you know, if you're, if you're trying to finish. shaman tank, Baron and Quantus, you might have a bad time. You're mm. not going to have enough mana, right? Where because shamans they can get a lot of their like their mana regen. Yeah. And block it. Right, so you know you got a heavy physical fight. They're your guy, but for something like <coughs> Quantus, you can hit him from range with searing pain, mm -hmm. and you're good. You're chilling. Yeah. Even if you get knocked out, you're still gonna hold aggro. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 one of the things that that we thought oh. was cool, like still letting them keep some unique flavor, but they're still and that's that's, that's, all, that's all classic is right. Like that's an you know, interesting way of looking is at good it. For something a bear is good for something else. You know, a bear can really pump threat with like a MCP. Not manual crowd pummeler and like a warrior is just really good at you know uh just massive sustained threat over time or massive brick tanking if you really need to like yeah, balancing strikes and mm -hmm. stuff like that right so I like that so what if you have what if you have a, a warlock tank on ragnaros and you're tanking from range i mean a fire yeah but is all of his damage is all the warlock damage fire i know searing pain is like a high threat ability but we don't know. I, I, who knows at level 60, what if they have a shadow threat threat gainer? Mainly fire? Yeah, but I'm, at level 25, Cricks, what, what I'm saying is like at, at level 60. Shadow Bolt becomes like a shadow cleave? Okay. Oh, oh, so the shadow cleave is melee? I mean, we don't know. Like, we, we, don't, we don't know if they're going to add new abilities or there's like a range ability that... Do you see what I'm saying? Because all we know is at level 25. All the Warlock spells are, are, are... Everything that we've seen is at level 25. Things could change.
Immolation Aura would be sick. Oh my gosh, dude. Immolation Aura. That would be... I feel like Warlocks are just going to be AIDS and vanilla, dude. <laughs> this changes. So my personal opinion is that uh, I think Warlocks should be situational tanks. I think Shamans should be situational tanks. And uh, they kind of described them as that. But then Nora said, well... Because Krix asked, he's like, yo, yo, can I main tank as a, as a Warlock? And Nora's like, well, you should be on par with other tanks. But what does that really mean? I feel like I, I feel like it would be a uh, good design to have uh, to, to have them like be particularly good at tanking certain types of things, but they're they are situational tanks. Like uh, like I think an enhanced shaman should be on the same level of like what a like, maybe slightly better than than uh, the same level at where a prop paladin is right now in vanilla. Because prop paladins in vanilla are better than people think they are, but they have their problems, right? Namely, no taunt. Um, there's problems with, like, shield block values and uh, uh, uncrushability and stuff like that, too. Some some little stuff. Um, little stuff, but, yeah, numbers. Um, I feel like that's where shamans should be, plus a little bit more. And I feel like warlocks should be on par with shamans. That's, that's, how, uh, that, that's how I feel. Um, because if all of a sudden you have like five, I mean six. Well, well, shamans and paladins are they're they're exclusive. So if you have five, uh, like main tank type of uh level of of tanks, it it just seems kind of weird, right? Like everybody needs to have their own certain flavor, things they excel at. That's that class fantasy. That's that. Uh, that's that specialty of what makes classic feel like classic is whenever everybody is good at certain things. And I, and I worry about this. I, I talked about it in the other video, uh, that if you give everybody too much and everybody's too good at everything, then you, you stop feeling special. Um, I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer in this. People look at weaknesses of their classes as a weakness when in reality, you need to not look at your class. You need to you need to take one step. You know, you remove yourself one degree and look at all the classes together. And the weaknesses of all the individual classes are not weaknesses of those classes. Uh, it look at the uh, it makes the other things that you do better. Like look at it almost like glass half full. And then it's like, well, this is the baseline, right? Don't look at it as a weakness. That's the baseline, and that's a, and the other thing is a strength. And those strengths are what make your class special. Right, this guy is not that good at this, but then this guy is really good at this. Right, paladins are really good AOE tanks, consecrate, uh, return damage on the shield block, all that stuff. Warriors, really good single target tanks by design. Right, now you can do some things to, to AOE tank as a warrior and you're just fine. But like by design, they're meant to be like the single target tank, and uh, I think I think that is good. I think I think those specialties are good design when you remove yourself. Like don't look at just one class, but look at it one step above um so yeah are you guys a lot of people are questioning it are you guys worried or thinking about level 60 the raids at 60 with the runes with the raids already being like really really easy without the system and now that's going to make even everybody like more powerful is there like a, a buff to them or something one thing we are doing like to the open world in general even is uh we're increasing the damage output of mobs such that like at least you should oh, feel wow. threatened you shouldn't be able to pull oh that's huge classic yeah. and be able to just tank that that is that has been um, a huge so, like, huge point about, like we initially talked about like well should we increase everything's hp as well and i was like well we also don't want stuff to be like you're just sitting there you want it to be more punishing rather yeah. than like just beating your head yep. and that's i really, like that that's really the thing about vanilla too is that it's like it, it's not necessarily that stuff has a ton of health it's just i'm just gonna interrupt real quick that was a point that i was really worried about is is are we just gonna be so strong that the whole world is like you're gonna have to rebalance the entirety of the game if everybody is doing all this much damage you are gonna have to rebalance the entirety of the game that things hit you hard mm -hmm. and if you pull too many you're gonna die and that's i mean that's you know that from hardcore you know that for you know, <laughs> yeah, what I mean? yeah. like so so that was really the focus is like well, let's just make things more deadly so that you're still... I love that. I, I, I love that they've addressed that. Five things, you're just going to die. Mm -hmm. no, no getting around. Do you, are you, do you plan to change anything about the 60 raids, like, uh, mechanically-wise or anything? Or it's like MC is MC? It's and... honestly kind of too soon to say. I think it would be pretty surprising if we didn't make some adjustments, but it's just too soon to say. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's fair. So what's the... Uh, I think they should make some small that, like, changes. 
Not huge stuff. And then it's going to be like 35 or 40. Is it going to, or you're going to do a couple before 60 guys take it, right? So I think we're being coy. We're being have... coy a little bit about what the next That's the next level band is and what the next rate is and everything. But you said it'd be a month, right? Uh, no, it, it will be some number of weeks. We're trying to be unspecific about that. Okay. Probably, probably more than a month. It makes sense right? that they don't want to commit. Yeah, three or four months. It'll, okay. be, yeah. it'll, be, it'll, be a, it'll be enough time for you to dig in. Make sure you can find all the runes. Make sure you can do the raid. Get your best in slot from the raid if you want to get it. You know, if there's some discoveries that take you into the raid and things like that, make sure that you have uh, the ability to do yeah. all that. I'm more worried if, there's, if, if, if it's a couple months, unless you add more to it, if it's just BFD, right? It's going to be BFD, there's the one raid in that one bracket. I think. There's a bracket right yeah, now. Okay. Yeah, there's, go ahead. There's, there's something too, like if we, too far in advance, if we decide hard dates on things and just mm-hmm. say, yeah. okay, this is going to be out for this long, we really run the risk of too short or too long, yeah. right? And so we're trying to be really flexible, especially with given our team size, uh-huh. we pivot relatively quickly. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we're always like ear to the ground, you know, trying to figure out like yeah, that's sick. what feels good. Okay, last raid question. Are they all going to be ten man during these brackets? Not sure yet, honestly. Yeah. Like it, it, this is one of the cool things about kind of the power of. Good question, by the way. Ten. Wow, actually, we've, we've got very uh, robust tools that we've built up over decades, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and it's not terribly difficult to kind of turn the knob and say, like, oh, yeah, let's start working on this as a as a ten player. It's like, you know what? This would feel better as twenty. Let's just. Yeah, yeah. I was literally going to say it would be cool to like imagine you do like I don't know. Uh, Cathedral, or sorry, not Cathedral, Scarlet Monastery is like a 20 man. Or like, um, or Nomergon is a 20 man, right? That could be cool. You know what I think they should do is I think they should bring back 15 man UBRS. If you're an OG vanilla player, UBRS used to be a 15 man and they, they, they nerfed it and they cut it down to 10 man. So they should make UBRS 15 man again. It was, that was like, that's my, how I remember UBRS is I remember it as a 15 man. I don't even remember it as a 10 man that well, you know, uh, I, I would love to see them do that. Uh, and I think, uh, I think doing like some things is 15, some things is 20, um, dude, the idea of having 20 people running in Omergon is kind of sick. Continue. The numbers up and it, it works. So. Uh, obviously some mechanical changes and stuff, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say, I think the thing we're a little concerned 20 man about BRD, the, the nature of well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's dial it back a little bit. You don't want to change the entire game to turn everything into raids either. Okay. Uh, and, and I don't know if there's a level designer on the classic team. So I don't know if they're going to make an extension of dungeons as raids. So what I mean by that is. Uh, like the extension of the dungeon as a raid is BRD to Molten Core, right? Like, like a lot of these raids are that, you know, like there's like the portal, like Blackwing Lair is like the extension of, of Blackrock Spire. Like you go into Black, Blackwing Lair and there's a portal to Blackrock Spire. Or excuse me. I said the words backwards. You go into Blackrock Spire and then there's a portal to Blackwing Lair behind Nefarian after you go and do Rend, right? Blackwalk. Did I say Blackwalk? Blackwalk! Okay, um, I think I think that could be cool. Um, I, I think that could be cool. Um, I think I think uh, if they if they make like extensions, but I don't think they have a level designer on the team to build out a world. Because I was thinking about this too. Let's say they make a Scarlet Monastery raid. Like I almost imagined like a like a Castle Nathria sort of thing, but it's Scarlet themed. Like just the the visual of it. Like if I were to draw a concept art, I could imagine it being like very regal, but it's instead of it being like vampires and stuff, it would be like paladins, crusaders, you know, righteous, holy. Like it would be like a, a that's kind of what I imagine. Like the 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 aesthetic of it being. Um, but I, I I don't know if they have level designers on classic teams. Am I crazy? Isn't there an unused raid in Strathholm? There is. There is a raid portal. And uh, I think the assumption was that raid portal was the portal to Nax. I think that's what the assumption has always been, is that that raid portal that you go where all the zombies come out right before you go kill Baron, um, that that's the portal to Nax. There's also a raid portal in Stormwind, which I believe was, if I remember correctly, it was meant to be player housing. Like it was like a, it was like a stand-in for player housing. 
So, yeah. Anyway, continue. Let me go back a little bit to, to remind ourselves what we were saying. As a 10 player, it's like, you know what? This would feel better as 20. Let's just crank some numbers up and it, it works. So, uh, obviously, some mechanical changes and stuff. But, yeah. I mean, the, I wouldn't say... I think the thing we're a little concerned about, too, is that the nature of Season of Discovery, too, is that, you know, you may level to 25, find all the runes level an altar or two, and maybe you want to just kind of take a break for a week mm -hmm. or two. Like, we're, we don't want to shackle you to the game. Approachability and respecting your time is a big goal here. So we don't also want to get in a situation where it's like, well, you need 40 people, and if five people decide they want to take a break, your raid is in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that was part of the reason for, like, during the level-up process, smaller raid sizes kind of made sense mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Are the battlegrounds in at the first phase? Yes. Yeah, so Warsong cool. Gulch will be. Yeah. Are you going to do, like, a... The same thing where we like all, all level 25 one only or like a, how's the brackets gonna work with it just dude season of discovery phase one level 19 twinks oh level 19 twinks and season of discovery is gonna be crazy dude and level 25 twinks it's gonna be both of them level 25 twinking new meta Oh, it's gonna be wild, dude. Anyway, the normal way. Continue. Yeah, the normal way, okay. for the most part. Um, yeah, PVP's honor system's on. But pe people won't be able to grind out rank 14 because we're still scaling based on your level, how much honor rewards you can actually earn, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You won't be able to get past a certain point. Yeah. Um, there, and there's really good, like, I think we mentioned this in the panel that the uh, Ashen Vale PvP event gives Warsong Gold Trap for Horton Alliance, right? Oh, some, good! Some spicy rewards there. I didn't, you know, maybe I misheard or I didn't like, hear that in the panel. I, I, I didn't catch yeah. that. Great those idea. Models, those are the original unarmored mount models. Yeah, that's a brilliant Alpha idea. Whoa, 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 What, what, what? Say it again? It gives Warsong Gold Trap for Horton Alliance, right? Yeah. And there's some pretty spicy rewards there. I don't know if you noticed what the, like on the VOD and stuff, it's hard to see, yeah. but those mount models, those are the original unarmored mount models. Oh yeah, my gosh, idea. dude. Actually, a brilliant idea. Oh, I'm so, going to tell you guys. You get those from Warsong Gold Trap now. That's so cool. I was so big on, on them giving unarmored mounts, like unarmored epic mounts, the OG epic mounts. And I talked to Blizzard about it before Classic launched. And, what they, and I was like, why don't you guys make this a thing so that people like have something to push for? Because so, so. Let's let's dial it back a little bit. In original Vanilla WoW, whenever Vanilla WoW came out, there were epic mounts that didn't have armor. You know, now like at level 60, the, the epic mounts all have a bunch of armor and stuff on them that look really cool. Uh, but there also were, uh, like I think it was before patch 1.3. I think it was before Dire Maul came out. I can't remember. Um, it might've been 1.4 or 1.2, but I think it was like around 1.3 where uh, they redid the models and they were like, oh, we, we added, we're, we're redoing the models, but we're actually not going to change the models. We're just going to take the epic mounts that already exist, take them off the vendor, and we're going to add new ones that look cooler. So if you want to keep your old model, if you want to keep your old mount, you can. So we didn't want to take that away from anybody, and then you can get the new ones. But what ended up happening is those OG, those OG mounts, those OG unarmored epic mounts, ended up being a status symbol because they were unobtainable now. And the, the same, they did the same thing on private servers where they were like, okay, if you get your epic mount early and afresh, like let's say, let's say in phase two, for example, uh, you remove it. But if you get that, if you get that OG unarmored epic mount, you can keep it and then you can get the other one. And I talked to Blizzard about this beforehand and, and uh, the consensus back then was, oh, well, we didn't, we don't want to promote unhealthy gameplay to where like people, this is like back then where people feel like they have to rush to get an epic mount before Dire Maul comes out or before phase two comes out. And I was like, guys, please, like, please. Like, it was just like, yeah. <laughs> like, but uh, then this was like, this was like four years ago, right? Cause this is that, and, and it, it, like at the, at the point where, where I was told this, it was like, it was already too late anyway, but I was just like, come on. And and I feel like something now, like it's cool that they're, they're uh, they're going back and they're they're doing this now. So uh, where where they're allowing you to use the unarmored epic mounts uh, in, in some form or fashion. So maybe what you'll see is is you can use that epic mount at level sixty. I mean, this is how they're using it for season of discovery. But the fact that those models are in their head and they're like, hey, like let's let's find a way that people can ride these. That's cool because I think they're gonna bring them back. Anyway, continue. Very cool, and obviously they're only usable in Ashenvale, but they're very. Very enticing rewards for that. So um, we're hoping PvP uh, takes <coughs> off really well. Nice. Um, yeah. 
Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you guys so much. Thanks. Hope I didn't annoy you guys with my millions of questions. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you guys. All right. Thanks. You guys are amazing. Yeah, Nora, Nora and Agra are great, man. Crix did a great job as well. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Huge, huge shout out to Crix for for uh, doing that interview, putting that out. Whenever I had the opportunity to do that years ago, it was it, it was something that felt really special to me, and and uh, it felt cool that like Blizzard was like starting to work with like content creators and stuff more and more and. Uh, it's it's cool to see it's cool to see these guys get like the opportunities to do that and uh, ask really good questions. You know that's that's how you keep getting the opportunities to do that is by asking good questions and um, being respectful and and all that kind of stuff, right? You can you can be direct and you can uh, have criticisms, but as long as you're respectful, I, I think you, you can usually get to uh, get good opportunities to do that kind of stuff. So, uh, big shout out to Crix. Here's a link to the video. Uh, if you guys want to go back and you guys want to watch it on your own. Uh, I hope you guys like this. L leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about the interview. Just any any other questions, anything, any kind of feedback that you guys have. What do you guys want to see with Season of Discovery? I hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video. Please, please, please like the videos and leave a comment for me. Uh, if you guys want to subscribe, if you guys like the content here, I do literally everything. I've been a classic WoW guy for years. That's how I started my channel. We're getting back into it. You know, this was the WoW classic waiting room for years. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, if you guys like to see my other stuff, check out the channel, uh, subscribe, turn on your notifications so you guys know whenever I post a video. And uh, yeah, YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok threads, everything is SFAN TV. And uh, I'll see you guys later.